take all this huge amount of water from the sea and put them into Israel. In three months, we plan and design the new national water system of Israel. It's easy to forget when you drive through Israel today that all these places that you're looking at that have green and vegetation and agriculture just a couple decades ago looked like this. They were barren, they were empty, they were completely dry, bone dry as we say. When I was a child growing up in Israel, we were constantly trained to conserve water. Don't take long showers, don't let the hose run, don't water the yard. There was a huge need to conserve water because there was such a scarcity of water in this land. You came into Makot in the time where Israel was coming out of a drought and heading into the next drought. That's right. One week after I got into the office, they established an investigation committee regarding the water problems in Israel. Because we didn't have enough water. Uh, yeah, the level of the water in the wells all over Israel was very low. It was really, really a serious situation then. It was when the desalination plant <laughs> starting to be connected to the system, as we call it, the revolution of the water sector. Ido was the CEO of Mekorot when Israel began to seriously address its water crisis. Mekorot is Israel's national water company. It was founded in 1937, which means it existed even before Israel officially became a country. Since then, it's grown into a huge company with many branches and over 3,000 water installations throughout the country, all with the purpose of supplying water to the people of Israel. I met with David Balsar, who manages Mekorot's Department of Innovations and Ventures, to discuss what is arguably Mekorot's biggest achievement yet, turning seawater into drinking water. I guess this is one of the biggest achievements mm -hmm. of the Mekorot and, and the state of Israel. We decided that drinking water mm -hmm. would come from the sea. It's an endless resource of water. We built five desalination plants across the Mediterranean Sea and one more in, uh, in Elat, in the Red Sea. And this provides more than 80% of uh, drinking water. It's very substantial. Yeah, so this enables us to detach ourselves from the dependence on, on climate. The second biggest achievement is agriculture. We are reusing 90% of our wastewater and turning them into high quality water for irrigation. Is that abnormal or is this something that's common around the world? Uh, that's, that's a world record. Behind us is probably Spain with 30%. I ask my people in Korot, do you have the system? How to take all this huge amount of water from the sea and put them into Israel? In three months, we plan and design the new national water system of Israel, and that was one of the most important things. They had the vision to think ahead, many years ahead, and establish this spine. It goes across the whole the state of Israel, it carries water to every point in Israel. The relevance and importance of Israel's national water carrier is huge. David referred to it as a spine that goes across the whole country, and that's exactly what it is. It's essentially a huge water main, stretching across Israel from north to south, while the various stops along Israel's water infrastructure feed into it. This includes pumping stations, reservoirs, and now desalination plants. Being part of a government effort to do good is a unique privilege. Everywhere we look, Jordan, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, if you go farther, Iraq, I mean, no one in the region has water. Mm -hmm. In Israel, we are now in a, in a water surplus. So that's, that's quite amazing. The innovation and the creativity and the faith of those first settlers and even the governments of Israel transformed the way this country looked. So things that used to look like this, are now full of agriculture. And today, just a couple of generations later, me and my kids growing up here in the land, we're just living a different life. We no longer have to worry about water scarcity or water security in the land. The land has truly been transformed. That is nothing short of a modern day miracle in the land. We're heading up north on the 6th, which is the main south-north uh, route in the country to the central Galilee. We're about to meet a woman named Bonnie, and by what I understand, which is not a lot, uh, what she does is use fish, like legit, like little fish, to keep the water clean in Israel, 
and also to monitor the quality of water. I'm quite intrigued to see how this all works. This is the major center where the water is collected, treated, tested 24-7. This water is monitored and coddled. This and is the for. drinking water. This water will become drink. This is raw drinking water. This water has been pumped from the Sea of Galilee to be distributed for drinking water for Israel. This is the magic fish pond? This is the magic fish pond. Here. These are the magic fish? These are the hardworking fish. They don't seem to be working very hard at all. <laughs> but they actually are. The water is pumped in through each of these chambers. Mm -hmm. The fish are all getting exposed to the water. So okay. the little, what do you call them, the fingerlings? Yes, these are extremely sensitive to their environment. They will react very quickly if there's a change in some kind of an irritant. What would you see? They start swimming quickly? Very quickly, erratically, maybe up and down. So they go into stress? Exactly. They'll be extremely stressed. They could be aware of something like a chemical spill, an oil spill, anything outside their comfort zone. These fish, if I'm not wrong, this is St. Peter's fish that you would eat in any restaurant on the shores of the Galilee. Correct. These are tilapia. The mindset of Mikorot is to use as little artificial material as possible. So we're looking towards the natural world, what will give us the answer that we mm -hmm. want. And what, what would unnatural be? What, chemicals, chemicals? Uh, chemicals. So let's see what nature does. How does nature know if the environment is, mm -hmm. is not good? Kind of think of them as our little finny watchmen <laughs> that are our first line of defense that are guarding the, the, the drinking water mm -hmm. for the citizens of Israel. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom and God bless you from Jerusalem.